Hello and welcome to this short training session. This is one of a series which has been designed to illustrate a range of tools and techniques that both the TUC and the Professional Development Centre consider that you will find useful and supportive. I'm Sally Crompton from the PDC and today I'm going to be talk to, talking to you about personally held values. In times of crisis, it can be reassuring and grounding to establish and reconnect with our own values. It helps us face instability by focusing on what is important. And it's only by truly knowing ourselves that we can manage change within us and respond effectively to those around us. A key part of knowing ourselves is understanding our own values. And this session has been designed today to help you uncover your own values so that you can understand how these affect your practice and your responses to others. I'm going to take you through this in the form of a presentation and I'm going to share my screen with you now. I'm sure you've heard much talk about values and about how our values shape us and help us to make sense of our world. But what do we exactly mean by that? In order to answer this question, we probably have to begin by looking at three concepts that are interlinked. And they are beliefs, values and attitudes. So beliefs are the things that we know to be true, but without necessarily having the evidence to substantiate them. And it might include our religious beliefs or knowing that in times of trouble, our family and friends will be there to support us. Or believing that citizens having the right to bear arms prevents us being victims of crime. Or that success is dependent on who we know rather than what we know. Or maybe that our DNA ensures that we will always be either fat or slim. Values are the basis of our ethical decision making and they underpin our understanding of what's right and what's wrong. So you may believe that stealing is wrong, that telling lies is wrong. You may also believe that hurting someone's feelings is wrong. Yet maybe to spare someone's hurt you've told a lie what we know is a white lie. Making value judgments can be difficult and it often involves compromises between absolute right and wrong. Attitudes affect how we assess others and events. And to do this, we draw on our beliefs and our values. If we believe someone isn't truthful, for example, because we've caught them out in the past, then we won't necessarily trust them in other situations. Our beliefs, our values and our attitudes aren't static, but are open to change. And like our personality, which relatively speaking is more fixed. With these concepts clearly affecting each other, it's wise over time to consider all of them to see how they shape you and how you make sense of the world and how they shape your ethical code of conduct. In this session, we are going to focus now on values. Values are the rules that govern how we think and how we behave, usually. As they are determined by what we believe is important, they will differ from person to person. When we live in accordance with our values, we are likely to feel comfortable and content. Sometimes though, our values are compromised by external pressures and that will cause us stress. Knowing our values gives us agency. And by that, I mean, it gives us some control. In that first, we are more likely to recognize when they are being undermined. And secondly, we can consciously choose whether to accept this or not. And if not, what we wish to do about it. 
When we understand our values, we discover what's truly important to us. And one way of doing this is to look back on our life, on its critical moments, to identify what made us happy and fulfilled, and what caused us upset and distress. I've attached an exercise to help you to reflect and to uncover your key values. And you can download this as a PDF from here at the end of the presentation. Once you know your values and which of these are being honoured or not, you can reflect on where there is disparity, what the possible obstacles are that are preventing you from living your values and what you need or want to do to ensure greater alignment. This exercise requires some deep reflection and committing to it fully will take you some time. I do think it's a worthwhile process and this understanding will support your decision making and build your confidence that your life is taking a course that you're happy with. While many of our values will remain constant over time, significant experiences and relationships in our lives can result in changes to our value base. And at such a time, you may want to revisit this exercise. If you find there is one value that is of critical importance to you, one that is maybe a guiding principle for you, then you may wish to find an image which represents that value to you and keep it close, maybe uh, on the office wall or as a screensaver, as a reminder. I've got a couple of images here to show you what I mean. An image such as this might represent mutual support or networking. Or one like this might represent mastery. Thank you for following this presentation today. Enjoy the exercise which is attached. Taking a step to uncover your own values is a positive step in the direction of supporting your own emotional intelligence. Always a worthwhile exercise. All the very best and see you again here soon. Goodbye.